I decided to buy Modern Warfare 3. It's been eight years since I played a COD, but there's a new Zombies and it lured me back. In this video, I will share a full guide on how a classic zombie player can re-engage with this game. By the end, you'll be able to crush both endgame scenarios of the Legacy Stronghold Fortress and the Level 3 Danger Zone. Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is quite different than past maps, where we had windows to hold back hordes, we had to strategically purchase doors to explore, and often had very tight spaces where you had to master the art of navigating around zombies. Now we have a completely open map where you can go anywhere right from the start and you can actually come in fully kitted and ready to take on the most difficult of bosses, but you will still find yourself being eaten by zombies if you don't make the right choices. This is a very in-depth video and I would suggest bookmarking it so you can watch it later. When you first arrive in the game, you and seven other squads made up of three members will land on the outskirts of the map. This is known as the level one danger zone. It's relatively safe and easy to survive in. The orange zone is the level two danger zone and this is where the difficulty starts to scale really fast. The zombies are faster, they have more health, and you will find random bosses scattered about. Uh, there's also the end game location of the legacy stronghold. I would strongly suggest staying away from there unless you are fully prepared as I described later on. The red zone is the level 3 danger zone and similar to the legacy stronghold, you want to stay away from here unless you are ready to take down mega abominations. In terms of icons, it can be quite overwhelming at first. Uh, looks like a Bethesda or Ubisoft game. I will go over the important ones throughout the video and I might even make an infographic which I'll post in our community tab so subscribe so you can see that when it drops. Now the main objective of zombies is to slowly build up a god like squad that can roll around slaying zombies with ease. To do this, you're going to need to build up an arsenal of equipment and weapons, and you do this by completing contracts. Generally, the higher the zone, the better the loot. You can earn schematics, which can grant you the permanent upgrades and weapons, can give you a huge advantage when you start your next run. Or you can complete missions that drive the story of zombies gameplay, and some of these are super grindy, and it can take several runs just to get them, even if you're solely focused on them. I, I have to say, I I don't think the ROI on these missions is quite worth it, but this is the only way you can get the Vondervoff schematic, so if you want to come in with that wonder weapon, that's what you have to do, and obviously if you're a collectionist like me, you're gonna do it, you're gonna grind through. This is way different compared to old school zombies where you always started off with just a pistol. Now you can land, upgrade your weapon to a high tier, basically a pack a punch of its own, then pack a punch it to level 3. Not to mention you can slurp down a bunch of perks that just amplify you and you are ready to literally laser your way to the end game right from the start. But you can only get there if you've successfully exfilled from a past game. In general, you have 45 minutes of regular play, and then after that the storm, an aether storm will start to expand, consuming the whole map, and this is over a period of 15 minutes. If you're caught in that storm, you will eventually die. So for loadouts and strike team operators, I'll probably do a more advanced video later on, also talking about how to exfil and manage your inventory. But uh, just for today, we're just gonna go quickly over gear so you know what all, all of this means. Uh, it can be a lot to, to soak in. So first is uh, on the left side here is your, your backpack or rucksack. Uh, right here, you can see I have a medium one equipped. Um, that is, uh, and there's a, a small, medium, and large. And small only has six slots. The medium has seven and the large has nine. Adds two more uh, slots on top of that. So it's a significant improvement to have a large rec sack. You can greatly improve what you can actually extract from the field. So definitely try to get those rec sacks upgraded as quickly as you can. Then you got a kill streak. This is a unique ability that you're able to call in. Uh, this one, I have a juggernaut right here, which gives me invincibility. You can call it airstrikes, turrets. Uh, it's really, really helpful to have that. It's a one-time ability, and then you'll have to get another one in map. Then you have your armor carrier. Uh, this is a large one. Uh, this just gives you extra health. Uh, there's a small, which gives you an extra uh, plate of damage worth. Uh, then there's the medium, it has two plates, and the large gives you three. Next we have is our mask. This is a, a basically a substitute for your health when you go into the aether assist zones. Very, very useful to have those on, uh, and they can be repaired. So uh, if you go to an ammo refill station, you can repair them, especially if you get the durable one. You don't want to use it all and lose it, so I definitely try to keep that repaired. And then the last slot here we have is our self revive kit. These are incredibly important if you're uh, trying to make sure you don't lose all your gear and lose everything that you're trying to exfil with. So uh, if you ever find one of these, definitely try to keep it. Uh, and if you ever go into a level three zone, you might want to have a couple of them. Um, then we have our, our two weapons. 
Going in here, you'll see that you have a whole bunch of uh, weapons that you collect. These are known as contraband. Um, if you use these um, and you lose it, it's gone forever. So it's only a one-time use. And you might have picked this up and it might have been a higher tier loot. But when you go into the map, it, it goes back to the base version. So um, that, that's just how that works. And then you have your insured slot. I, I'd always try to use your insured slot and really only go in with one weapon because uh, you always come out with a second. And then that way you always have a bunch left over uh, just in case, you know, you do run into a bug or a crash and you lose all your gear. You don't want to do that. Uh, I, I've actually ran out of everything head start from the pistol and that sucks. So I highly, highly don't recommend it. And then you have your tactical. Uh, this is the, you know, typically it's just regular kind of, um, you know, tactical things like flashbangs, smoke grenades. A lot of that's not very useful. I typically go for the scatter mine if I don't have a monkey. Uh, if you don't know what the monkey bombs are, they're like decoy uh, bombs that really lure in all of the zombies. And then it, uh, it gives you time to survive and, and pick up your mates if you need to. Or the cashmere. And this is like a black hole. Just sucks them in. It's amazing to have that. Uh, then you have your lethal. This is just like grenades, drones. I like the drone. I, I think the breacher drone is really good. Uh, you can send it out and it does substantial damage. Um, I, when I get those unlocked, I might play with those more too. And then last, we have used your field upgrade. Now this is a specific like zombies kind of upgrade. Um, there's a variety of them. I'm just gonna talk about the energy mine because that's what you're gonna be starting off with. Uh, it's basically like a little mini nuke actually. It, it does a really, really good job of clearing enemies. Even in, in the level three zone, uh, you drop it. It's got a short range. It'll do three bursts and it'll clear clear enemies. So uh, definitely use that uh, for large hordes or if you're trying to uh, clear out a, a mercenary uh a group right behind the door really really helpful for there too now it's time to find a squad and dive in your boots on the floor and running around there are a lot of climbable surfaces and vehicles which totally changes the way you have to think unlike old zombies games where you are just on the ground level running around in mostly tight corridors this game gives you a lot of choice to move around use it hopping over small objects like walls or barricades will just totally reroute zombies and you can really ruin their pathing by doing small ups and downs on buildings now Another trick is to hop through windows, and this is a great way to dodge zombies and can really save you from a bad situation, especially in the aether cyst uh, kind of uh, infested areas. Those really, really suck, and so you can bust some cyst and then hop through a window and, and escape safely. Now. Also, make sure you're actually sprinting. Uh, this is something I wasn't used to. Uh, you can actually double tap your sprint button and you'll actually sprint, uh, not just run, you're sprinting. So make sure you do that and, and also use your vehicles throughout the game. It's just way faster and it's safer. And every once in a while, you will end up stumbling upon this monster, the Blood Burner. This vehicle spawns once on the map and if you're lucky enough to find it, please hop on that as soon as you can because you're going for a joyride. Uh, it has unlimited fuel. It can kill an infinite amount of zombies. It has a special ability which can even delete bosses and did I mention it can ride on top of water it, if you find it in this just take it for a playthrough uh, you're going to the level zone three slaughtering zombies uh, and, and the only way it really gets damaged is if you hit walls or obstacles so uh, I may do a breakdown on this video on how to best use it later but uh, back to movement if you're like me you haven't played warzone and the whole parachute mechanic is new but very important especially you know climbable surfaces getting to the top of the building and then parachuting off is the perfect way to escape and gives you time to regen. There are also redeploy sites, uh, locations where you can quickly get to a high altitude and parachute long distances. This comes in two forms, the drone redeploy where you can ascend to the top or these, um, I'm calling them storm jumps, that teleport you even higher than the drone. And I would suggest you pinging the location you want to fly to first and then jump or ascend, uh, immediately pop your parachute and then glide. Uh, and you can cover large portions of the map this way. Especially if you daisy chain these deploy sites will quickly get you to your desired target. Very handy for making it to the final exfil when you are on the wrong side of the store. Now let's actually start talking about how to go through a playthrough. And so we'll start off with phase one. Uh, you should open your map first thing when you land and ping the closest icon near to you that is either a bounty contract, an infested aether nest, or a cargo mission. These can all be done fairly fast. They're quite easy and can provide valuable loot for the rest of the game. Uh, you can also do a merc camp. I, I would only suggest doing one of these uh, as you can get dropped pretty easily. Uh, but this is just to get that merc stronghold key if you're even trying to do the legacy stronghold endgame. Uh, and these can be found in the loot box once you've cleared all the enemies. Careful, they do often have snipers and turrets which can shred. So play safe, go single fire on a rifle, uh, sit back and take your time picking them off from a distance. Uh, and once uh, in those 
those cleared merc camps, you can actually find some pretty good loot. Uh, there's some upgraded armor carriers, backpacks, um, so it's, it can be useful to attack them for general loot as well. Now, uh, you can also find a, a stronghold key in a mercenary convoy. It, it's these three red trucks. You'll see it on your mini-map and, and for audio cues. Uh, honestly, I was just avoiding these unless you're feeling really strong at that point of the game. You, you'll continue to cycle through um, these quests till you have about 5,000 points. Make sure you're not entirely focused on just that um, because there is quite a bit of other expensive loot you can find from the environment. Just by opening lockers and cash registers, it, it'll make getting that initial payment a lot faster. You also want to keep a lookout for deadbolt turret keys. Uh, these will be used later when you're going to the level 3 zone and our main way you're going to be able to take down those bosses. Also keep an eye out for higher tier weapons. Uh, these are denoted by different colors and in order uh, common is gray, green is uncommon, blue is rare, purple is epic, and orange gold is legendary. These represent a huge raise in damage, ammo, and attachments and overall a massive improvement in the weapons. One thing to also look out for is chunks of flesh. These can be incredibly valuable. Uh, as they, but they do take a full slot, so that's annoying. But once you do find them, you can go to a dog house and give it the flesh. Then you can receive a powerful hellhound companion, and these guys are really useful. They can tank, uh, they can track the zombies, they heal over time, and they can revive you if you die. They're just so nice to have. And you can get one at each danger zone with a stronger pup at each level. The level 3 could single-handedly take on armies of level 1 or level 2 zombies and hold its own in a level 3 zone. You will need more meat for each zone however so level one you only need one level two you need two and level three you need three best way to farm these is go to an exfil site and, and just call in the bird uh then this will cause a massive amount of zombies to spawn uh, you just do this a couple times mowing them down and you will accumulate three zombie flesh pretty quick uh then you know you could try and sneak into that level three zone find that dog house and run uh you can then pretty much solo anything in the level two zone uh, it's not necessary and it can take a little bit of a time but uh, it makes the game pretty fun and easy so just make sure that uh, you clear large hordes if they do swarm your dog because you don't want to lose that dog by accident. Now, once you do have 5,000 points, you can pack a punch. And this is denoted by this symbol. Uh, and it's a cornerstone of zombies, if you don't know. Um, so this significantly increases the power of the weapons. Uh, you can pack a punch a weapon three times. The first is for 5,000. The second is for 10,000. The third is for 15. Um, and if you get to the level two zone, uh, that, that's when you can level two pack a punch. And you need to be in the level three zone to pack a punch that third time. Time. I would highly recommend spending a little bit more time finding that higher tier weapon if you don't already have one, um, as I think that the higher tier weapons are basically pack punched above the gray weapons, and I think they gain exponentially more power with each pack punch as they're leveled up, leading to a huge difference in damage, uh, and that'll be vital for taking down the end level monsters. Uh, one option, if you haven't found a decent weapon, and only do this once you have your movement down and a perk, you need stamina up, that makes you run really fast, uh, is you can actually run into the level 3 zone and buy a weapon off the wall. These are almost always gold or purple weapons. It is risky though, and, and it can be hard. The dogs will still catch you, and uh, if you are able to though, you can score a legendary weapon and pack a bunch of it immediately, and you'll have a huge power spike. Uh, you'll easily clear the phase two of this tutorial. Um, you will need 10,000 uh, points to buy the wall weapon and pack a punch, um, or maybe if you found one of these Aether tools, you could just use this on your weapon, upgrade it to the higher tier, and then pack a punch it, um, and, and that's just another way you can, uh, you know, clear through this phase one. Now, moving on to phase two. Um, um, you should have a decent weapon and are ready to dive into the level 2 zone. You will keep doing similar missions and quests as in level 1, but they will be harder and, and you're going to have to play a little bit more cautiously. Uh, bounties will sometimes come with multiple sub-bosses and they can be tricky to take down. It's important to, uh, to keep your distance. Uh, check your surroundings and use your environment. Many of the bosses don't climb well, so getting on a roof can give you a huge advantage. They also have weak spots uh, they are important to target. I may do a video later on um, breaking down each of these bounties uh, and bosses and how best to kill them. So which one do you want? Please comment below. As you're progressing and collecting points, uh, pack a punch one of your weapons to level 2 when you have enough and then keep grinding quests. During this time, you need to get five things. One is that level two pack punch gun you should already have. You need to have at least a medium armor carrier and a medium backpack. One self revive or a hellhound level two, it's just so you can get picked up. Your allies might not be able to get to you at all. So think of your, yourself there. And, and then a damaging weapon or a turret. So you need 15,000 for a pack punch level three or a deadbolt turret. And then that'll be able to take care of those bosses for you. Now, I will mention here that the turret keys 
are by far the easiest way to kill your targets in that final zone. If you're planning an attack in the Legacy Stronghold, you will also need to have secured the Legacy Stronghold key from a standard Stronghold. And these can spawn in various locations, including level one zones. So keep an eye out for those. Make sure that you do have that mercenary key from a convoy or a merc camp so you can enter. Now this should all be done with 10 to 15 minutes left in regular play. Uh, otherwise you just won't have enough time to really collect the loot that you need to do. Just play it safe. It's more important to exfil and start fresh, not mad about losing everything in the last game. Uh, you'll also just be able to advance faster and, and because you're stronger at that start, you're just going to fly through and it's going to feel a lot easier. Uh, if you do feel scared that you're going to lose everything, just make sure you have a few extra quick revives in your inventory, maybe a black hole, a monkey bomb, have that large plate carrier, large backpack, uh, and a level level 2 dog at the minimum. Uh, and then you can really sneak in there and, and really uh, play around the level 3 zone. Uh, maybe you can just go in there, grab a, a pack punch level 3 and run and just enjoy exploring level 2 zone. Um, but, you know, w once you're ready and you've restocked, uh, eventually you're going to have a whole bunch of Aether Crystals, Aether Tools, and you can basically skip Phase 1 and 2 and just go into that, that Phase 3 uh, fully prepared from the beginning. Now, Phase 3, all right, we're going to talk about Phase 3 now. You're, you're fully stacked and ready to dive into a really hard fight. With some thoughtful planning and, and skill play, you should be successful. All right, I'm going to break down the Legacy Stronghold first. And this place is a battle. You're basically on veteran hard mode. Uh, they're super tanky. They hurt and they're going to swarm you. Uh, the, the first step is to take down an, an attack helicopter that's going to spawn on the location right as you show up. Uh, you're going to want to just focus on that. Don't try to fight the enemies at the gate at the same time. This will not end well for you. Uh, and, and if you don't have someone with a missile launcher, uh, sometimes there's this secret loot cache. Uh, I would always suggest checking this loot cache as there's sometimes some really hidden, really good hidden weapons here. Uh, if not, your team will just have to laser it down until it goes down. It doesn't doesn't have too much health, but it hurts if it starts to target you. So make sure you're moving your feet. Once that is down, you're going to need to clear the initial gate. Um, you could drop an airstrike on the position if you feel it's necessary, or just land some pop shots slowly advancing. I, I would then suggest climbing here uh, off to the left. Uh, pushing from this position uh, really helps, it, and I think it's worked the several times I've broken in. You will need to watch out for reinforcement helos. I'd advise taking them down as quickly as possible. Uh, it will probably take as many bullets as actually shooting the enemies themselves but it's a lot safer for you because you just shoot them right out of the helicopter once the enemies on the outside are done it's time to unlock the door now here's the first thing you have to watch out for is a guy with a riot shield they will come out so make sure you have two team members or they'll get messed up as you can see in this clip my, my buddy got hit um, so split up opposite of each other and then light them up uh, whichever way he turns uh, then it progress slowly don't shoot at everything that moves some are decoys that will flash bang uh, and then you'll wake up on the floor uh, and as you clear room for room uh, you'll eventually get to an office room. And this is where there's a boss and a trophy system. If someone has a juggernaut kill streak, it's a good time to use it. Push forward, take out the trophy system. Um, otherwise, just take pop shots, take out the minions one by one, uh, maintaining your health. Be careful to check your back. They do periodically send in rogue assassin mercs, uh, which can totally destroy you if you're not paying attention. Uh, when only the boss is left in the back room, you should all charge and attack from both sides. Uh, you then have cleared the office and you'll have a chance at some rare schematics and weapons. However, I, I have to say, I've been really unlucky and disappointed with the drops here. Uh, the time commitment and the risk just don't seem the worth compared to going into a level three danger zone. You and your team are making your way to the level three zone. Y'all should have a clear idea of what you're going to be doing. If you're have, a, if you planning to do a pack a punch, go straight there, get it done, but also already have a contract pinged and ready to go. Uh, the elimination missions are really up to your loadout. If you have turret keys, it's really easy to find a target near a turret, lure them in, um, and it's just super easy to let the turret do all the work and you just focus on living. If a target is not near a turret you and your team are and your team are not confident you're gonna be able to beat it cancel that contract uh, and then find a new one to spawn you can do this by opening your tactical map and calling for a vote to cancel and then just keep cycling until they are back uh, if you don't have a turkey uh, juggernaut kill streaks uh, airstrikes these can all be used and, and should be able to help you take them down and then uh, your weapon your level three weapons should be able to take care of them the rest of the way now keep doing that until all your turkeys and kill streaks are done hopefully you will have picked up some schematic and then you need to get out. Uh, the ultimate goal is to carry those wonder weapons every game. Uh, and if you're not familiar, they are the super alien-like weapons from Call of Duty that just specifically made for zombies maps. And they make you an uncontrollable monster in the field. I've I've had about 30 hours in MW3 zombies now, and I can say I've only seen them dropped once each. So they're super rare. It's a grind to find them in general. If you do find the schematic for these weapons, though, it's a huge find. Exfil immediately. 
Starting with the Wunderwaffe, I'm sure the OGs know this weapon well as it's been around a long time. When you shoot a zombie and it hits, it creates a chain electrification effect. Uh, I got mine in the Legacy Stronghold. I actually thought I got the schematic at first, was super excited, but uh, it, it was very late in the match. There were three minutes left in the regular game, um, so I didn't get to do too much with it. The ray gun I got from a hunt mission in level two, I, I killed a mimic and it was just sitting there for me. Uh, the ray gun is a symbol of zombies. It unleashes a devastating projectile that does significant significant damage and as many have regrettably realized it creates a blast that can also hurt you so once you do get that ray gun you need a perk phd flopper this makes it so you won't take any damage from the ray guns explosions uh, and then you can unload with peace of mind watching your enemies disappear in front of you last is the new weapons specifically for this map the scorcher this truly made perfectly for this map it absolutely blew my mind when i found it i actually got it from a chest in a level one i repeat a level one aether nest and what really blew my mind was on the same run i got the ray gun so it's crazy i got both of them at the same time absolutely overpowered we needed to bring down four level three contracts and scored a bunch of loot but the scorcher has a bunch of utility too um, the fire function shoots out a beam that has a short range and just sits there and, and does damage over time to any units in the beam uh, i can do some decent damage but honestly not super impressed um, where it really shines is its secondary ability instead of aiming down the sights uh like a regular rifle, it actually charges up and then it rockets you off the ground, leaving behind a blast radius doing damage to any of the enemies in a moderate sized area. Yeah, it's crazy for traversing the map safely and quickly. No zombie's going to touch you. Um, and, and what this really showed was you don't need to be in a level three zone to get these weapons. It's just rare. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, 30 hours to get this. When it came to Xville, I did have to drop and trade these in for some legendary weapons because uh, you have to know it's important to check your gear before you leave. Some items cannot be brought back. And sadly, this includes the wonder weapons. And here, some other t important tips when it comes to exfil when the helo is landed don't immediately go on straight uh, you, you have some time left uh, you might get swarmed if you get on too soon so wait until there's roughly 10 seconds then run on and just clear zombies if they try to rush in if you are running from the storm there will be an exfil called at around five minutes 40 seconds uh, the final exfil site will appear on your map uh, you can then predict uh, where it will be by just looking at the opposite side of the origin of the aether storm it's always the opposite corner so just make sure you're working your way towards there so you don't lose everything. Uh, I know it's fun to greed up until that last exfil, but uh, there has been a bad bug where the chopper just doesn't show up, and that is incredibly painful. Uh, I think it's caused by not just not being close enough around the three minute mark. This is when the chopper is supposed to spawn into the game. I think that if you're not close enough, it just won't spawn, and then you'll die waiting for it. But you should be able to exfil now successfully loaded with loot. Uh, hey, if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you next time.